Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. In this video, I'm gonna give you a fairly brief, but also quite thorough introduction to Unity ML Agents 1.0. This is focusing on the 3D ball example, which is part of the ML Agents GitHub repository, but you don't get access to it if you just try to install ML Agents from the package manager. So I thought it would be helpful to share just an intro of how to get everything set up and installed, as well as how to train an agent from scratch. This is actually the first section of an AI flight course that my wife and I put together. Uh, we released it in November 2019, and since then, Unity ML Agents has been updated several times. Now that we're on version 1.0, we're updating that course, and we thought it would be pretty cool if we could just share this first section with you for free on YouTube and it could it'll be helpful on its own and then if you like it if you like the style of instruction if you think it's great then check out the link in the description we'll post a discount code for the course in this video we're going to talk about unity hub and anaconda unity hub is just a tool for managing unity installations and unity projects Chances are you've already used it, but in the case that you don't have this installed yet, you want to go to Unity's website and download it. And the direct download link for this is unity3d.com slash get dash unity slash download, and you'll be able to download Unity Hub. And you can get there from the home page, but it takes like five clicks to get to this page, so I figured I would just share that. And that link I'll provide in one of the resources for the course. So download that. And once you have that, you'll have something like this. And make sure you install a recent version of Unity. I have 2019.3 installed, and I would recommend something at least that or newer installed. Anaconda. So most deep learning training, in my experience, is done with Python. And... Windows is not great, in my experience, with managing Python environments. And that's where Anaconda comes in. So ML Agents uses Python for training, and Anaconda helps you install Python and manage Python on your computer. It works on Windows and Mac and Linux, and we're just going to use it in this course. It's pretty easy to use, and it's free. If you already know what you're doing with Python environments and you're confident that you don't need this, then it's not a requirement. But for everyone else, I'd recommend just following along. So what you'll want to do, at least at present, this is how the how their website works. You go to the individual edition and then you can click on download and then it takes you down the page to these Anaconda installers. So you'll want to pick your operating system and then make sure you get the Python 3.7 version that matches your computer the best. So I have a 64-bit computer, so I can install this one. So if you're not sure which one of these to install, like you're not sure if you have 64 or 32, uh, you can actually type in just 64 if you hit the Windows key in 64. And there's a settings thing in here that says, see if you have a 32-bit or 64-bit version of Windows. And if you click on that, it'll open your settings app and you can see system type and then it'll tell you whether you have 64-bit or 32. So that's just a little tip. So go ahead and download that. And then if you scroll up, there's documentation links here and this will tell you how to install it. There's an installation section. It'll tell you how to install it, and then there's even some basic user guides and stuff. Just make sure you have it installed, and we'll be using Anaconda in a bit, not right away. In this video, we're going to create a new Unity project, install ML Agents, and then import the example ML Agents projects from the ML Agents GitHub repository. So the first thing you should do is open Unity Hub, and then make sure you've got your 2019.3 version of Unity or newer, and create a new project. We're gonna do the 3D template for now, because that's what the Unity ML Agents examples uses. And then let's give this project a name, and I'm gonna call it MLA for short, examples. 
doesn't really matter what you call it, and make sure you put it somewhere that's easy for you to find. And then click Create. And this will take a moment to create. So while this is happening, we want to go and download the example projects. So if you go to the Unity ML Agents GitHub page, which I'll provide a link in the course, but if you want to know, it's github.com slash unity dash technologies slash ML dash agents. And if you're not super familiar with GitHub, it's basically just a place to store code. And this is essentially a folder that has lots of other folders and code and other assets and things in it. This is the official Unity GitHub page. And we want to get the example projects that are contained inside. But I'll warn you right away, you don't want to just click clone and download because this is the master branch. And by the time you see this tutorial, they'll have made changes that could mess with things and change things and cause problems. So instead of that, I'm going to suggest that you scroll down past this picture and find the section that says releases and documentation. And as they say here, the table below lists all our releases, including our master branch, which is under active development and may be unstable. So that's just saying in other words why we're not using the master branch. Right now the newest for me is May 20th, 2020. So that's the version I'm going to suggest that you work with through the rest of this course just so that you don't have any compatibility issues. They so far have made small changes that end up having kind of big impacts at least in terms of making a course and following along. So it's probably best that you stick with the version that I'm using and then after you've gone through the course, then the updates to the latest versions should be very minimal. So find release two, and then click on download, and then save this file. I've already saved it, so I'm not gonna download it again, but save it and unzip it somewhere that is convenient to work with. I suggest moving it out of your downloads folder uh, just for better organization so you don't accidentally delete it later, but it doesn't really matter where it is because we'll just be pulling files out of it for now. So once Unity is up and running and it seems like everything's all set, we've got this empty scene, we need to install Unity ML Agents. So for that, you're going to want to go up to the Window menu and find the Package Manager. And you should have this pop up. It is the Package Manager and it's already got a long list of different things on the side here. You need to make sure that you have, under this advanced menu, show preview packages needs to be enabled. And then you're gonna see all of these different options with preview next to them. Then you can find the ML agents package, which they're in alphabetical order, so it should be about halfway down the list. And then right now, the default one for me is version 1.0.2. By the time you take this, that could have changed. So you can click on this see all versions and then make sure you just select the 1.0.2 version to install. Then go ahead and install that. While this is installing, I wanna draw your attention to the ML Agents Release 2 folder. So this is the unzipped version of what I just told you to download. And inside here, this is just all of the same files that are in that GitHub repository. So what we're gonna need from in here is inside of this project folder. There's a lot else going on in here. Um, I don't wanna go into everything that's in here. There's actually really helpful documentation that's in here or that you can view on the GitHub page so that you can see everything that's going on in here. But there's a few things that I'll just point out. There's this com.unity.mlagents folder. That's actually what gets updated in the package manager. They submit this folder to the Unity package manager on the back end so that when you're downloading it, this the files that get installed from here are actually what goes into the packages. So I'll show you that really quick. So I think it's it's installed now. Yeah, up to date. So I can close the package manager and I can look down in packages, and then this ML Agents folder has editor, plugins, runtime, tests, all of these. If you go in here, 
you're going to see these same folders, editor, plugins, runtime tests, and some other stuff that's in here too. But that's essentially what lives inside of the packages folder here. It's, it's this thing. But you don't need to do any of that manually because we're using the package manager. There's also these two ML agents and ML agents ENVs folders. These are the Python libraries, and we'll be installing them via Anaconda later, but that's where those live. And then the one that we want to use right now is in this project folder. Project just contains a Unity project, and this is a Uni Unity project with examples in it, and we want to import those examples to our new project. So go to your Assets folder and find the Assets folder in the Project directory, and then you can just click and drag this ML Agents folder, the whole thing, down into your Assets directory. Now it's it's working, so it might ding at me if I try and hide this. So I'm just going to be patient, I guess. And now that this is imported, looks like all the progress bars are done, I can open up this folder and look inside the examples thing. So inside of the examples folder, you'll see lots of different examples. And these are really great for learning what ML agents can do and some ideas for how you can do it. So we'll be going through this in the next video, but if you wanna get familiar with what the different examples are, you can go to the ML agents page. You can scroll down to the release two docs, click on that. And then there's a section here under getting started for example environments. And you can see all of them here. These are all of the example environments that are contained in this project. So we'll be looking at one of those in the next video. In this video, we're going to take a look at the 3D ball example. So take a look in your ML agents examples folder and open up 3D ball. Go into scenes, and then pick the 3D ball one. Don't do the hard one. These little cube agents are basically trying to keep these balls balanced on their heads. And if you hit play right away, these are pre-trained, so they should be pretty good at balancing the ball on their head. So, they're not trained to perfection, as you saw that ball did fall off its head, but in general, they're pretty good at keeping these balls from falling off of their heads. So pretty impressive. And let's take a look inside of each one of these. You'll notice that there's 12 of them. And we can look at just one in particular. So inside of here, there is a ball. And the ball is just a basic sphere and it has a material on it that makes it look like a checker. And it has a sphere collider and a rigid body. The rigid body is what allows it to have physics and gravity and interact with the head of the cube guy. Then there's the agent. So each one of these is an agent. And right now we're looking at this one. The agent has some scripts at the top level, as well as a box collider. And then underneath, it has just some visible pieces here. So these don't actually have any physical components to them. They're just for us to look at and for it to look nice. The agent itself has three, no, nope, four, four scripts here. So the ones that are particularly interesting are this ball 3D agent script and the behavior parameters script. So the ball 3D agent is the script that they wrote that is specific to this particular agent, and it controls what the agent does. And I'll just double click this to open it. So there are several functions in here. I'm not gonna go into detail, but I'm just gonna point them out. So first of all, this is inheriting from the agent class. Agent comes with the unity.mlagents namespace and it contains a bunch of functionality, including some functions that we're going to end up overriding for our airplanes, but they've overrided a few here for their own functionality. 
So this one right here, anywhere you see an override, it's using something from the agent class. So it's overriding initialize. And this is what happens when the game starts, essentially. And then there's collect observations. So it's observing things about the world. And in this case, it's observing its own rotation in the X and Z axes, as well as the position of the ball and the velocity of the ball. It also has this function on action received, which is called anytime the neural network makes a decision. And it does some math to figure out how to convert a list of actions that come in as numbers and convert them into rotations around the X and Z axis. So we'll go into more detail on this, but I just wanted to give a really high level overview. It also handles rewards that it gets based on the position of the ball. There's one for on episode begin, which happens anytime a new training run starts. Heuristic allows you to control these agents with the horizontal and vertical axes. And set ball is to just reset where the ball is. So back in here, basically this is doing all of that work while the game is playing. Behavior parameters specify some things about how the neural network hooks up to things. So this vector observation space size, this number eight actually corresponds to the things that are being observed here in collect observations. We'll go into more detail on that later in the course. Continuous means that it is taking actions that are somewhere in the range of negative one to positive one. So you could give it a 0.5 or a plus one or negative one, negative 0.7, zero, something like that. So those are the values that get passed in that say how much it should rotate in either direction. Then there's this model here. This is the pre-trained neural network weights. And those actually are in 3D ball TF models because these are actually saved TensorFlow models that have been converted into Barracuda format. So Barracuda is just the neural network inference engine that's made by Unity for Unity. Don't worry if that was completely over your head. We're gonna go into way more detail on all of this stuff, but I just wanted to give kind of a, an overview for those of you who are curious. And the rest of this, safe to ignore at this point. So the thing that's important to know is that these are pre-trained. And if we want to retrain it, train it ourselves, or if you have a completely new agent, you're obviously not going to have a pre-trained neural network yet. So I'm gonna show you in the next video how you can actually retrain this, and that'll give you an idea of what the whole end-to-end -end process is for creating a project like this, writing a script like this, and then training it which we'll do in the next video. In this video, we're going to set up and start training this 3D ball environment. So as I mentioned before, you need Python to train ML agents and you should have downloaded Anaconda. And so we're gonna open up the Anaconda prompt now. So I'm gonna open Anaconda prompt. And then when you open it for the first time, you're gonna get a black window that says base on the left and then it should have a folder that you're in. The base is the base environment. Anaconda works with things called environments, which are basically sort of safe sandboxes where you can install any sort of Python libraries you want without messing up any other environments. So we're going to create a new environment. And the command for that is conda space create dash n. Dash n means we're going to put a name so the name that we're going to give this is something like ML Agents 1.0. We're actually going to call this for this course ML Agents-1.0.2. Whoops, 0.2. That's the version that I'm going to use. And actually, I'm going to put a dash in there as well. ML-Agents-1.0.2. And then you have to type uh, space and then Python equals 3.7. So that's going to specify what version of Python you want to use. Once you've run that, it's going to ask you if you want to proceed with installing all of these things. Go ahead and hit the Y key and hit enter. And depending on 
internet connection and whether you've installed some of this before, it may go very quickly or it might take some time. At the end, you should get a command like this, conda activate. We're gonna run this, conda activate ml-agents-1.0.2 and hit enter. And now you'll see something new on the side here. So this is uh, in parentheses, this environment. So now we know this environment is active. In the future, if you want to reload one, you just have to do conda env list, and it will show your list of environments with a little asterisk next to the one that you're currently in. So I have a bunch of these from different things I've been working on. This is the one that I just created. Now we need to install ML agents. The version I want you to install is version 0 0.16. So type in pip, P-I-P, install, and then M-L-A-G-E-N-T-S equals equals 0 0.16.0. Enter. And this is going to take a moment because it's installing quite a few different things, including TensorFlow and TensorBoard and just a lot of different things. So this will take a moment. So go ahead and let this run. And when it's done, we'll come back and we'll start training. All right. So when you see a prompt like this again, that means it's done installing and we're ready to start training. Before you start training, make sure that you do have Unity open and that it's open to the scene that you're ready to start training in. Now the command you want is mlagents-learn, L-E-A-R-N, and then you need to specify a config file. So the config file that you want is in the folder, this ML agents release two folder that we downloaded under config, trainer config. So you want to copy the path to this. So you can click on copy path on Windows or if you're on Mac or Linux, then uh, you'll just need to get the actual path to it. And then you wanna use that. I right click to paste this into the second part of this command. And then you need to specify a run ID. So dash dash run dash ID. And then we can give this any name we want, but I'm going to call it 3D ball underscore zero one. So I typically give it a name like that so that if I mess up one of these training runs and I have to run another one, then I'll just call the next one 3D ball underscore two. When you're ready, go ahead and hit enter. And it's going to show a bunch of stuff. It may also ask you if you want to uh, allow access, and you do. And then the important thing here is it says, listening on port 5004, start training by pressing play button in the Unity editor, okay? So I also wanna point out, if you have this highlighted like this, it may not actually pick up, so you'll wanna hit enter just to make sure that it's still running. For some reason, it doesn't like to work when it's highlighted and then go to Unity and hit play. And it should start going. Okay, so what we're looking at here is that all of these are trying to train simultaneously and you'll notice that the ball is falling off their heads. If you right click on the game tab and click on maximize, it'll hide this. And open up the project settings. If you don't see a tab for it, you can go to edit project settings and find the time section. This is running at 20 times the normal speed. So change this to one really quick to see what they look like at normal speed. And you'll see for sure that they're not very good at this. They're, uh, the balls are just falling off their heads. Um, so we can speed this back up. So I'm gonna change it back to 20 and let it go. Um, you can go faster than 20, but sometimes if you go too fast, then the physics start acting weird or you end up actually having things happen where the training will slow down because it's trying to run the game too fast. So 20 seems to be a pretty safe sweet spot. And as they're training in the Anaconda prompt window, you'll start seeing these steps count up and the time elapsed. Now, before I say that, show you about that, I'm just going to show you really quick. 
You might get some CUDA errors if you don't have CUDA installed on your machine. And on this machine, I, I don't think I've installed CUDA yet. So uh, I have these CUDA RT errors. Those, in my experience, have been safe to ignore because we're just training with the CPU. So these right here, you'll notice that there's a time elapsed in seconds, and then there's a mean reward. So the average reward of all of the agents at that point. So it started pretty low at around one. And then as we've gone, it's gotten up to a mean reward of 100. And it looks like it's maxing out. So I think that's about as good as it can get. If we go back here, we'll see that the ball doesn't fall off their heads. They've actually learned very quickly how to balance the ball on their heads. And if we slow it back down to one really quick, we can see in real time that they're very good at balancing these on their heads. When you're pretty confident that this is done training, which by the way, this project trains extremely fast. Our airplanes won't train quite this fast. Most of the agents that you build probably won't train this fast. These are pretty simple agents that are able to learn very quickly. So just wanted to get that out there. When you're done, there's two ways of stopping this. You can do control C here and that'll stop the training or you can hit play in the Unity editor and that'll stop training. You should see that it saved the model. And down here at the bottom, it says done, wrote dot slash models, 3D ball underscore zero one, 3D ball dot NN file. So this is basically a new version of this NN file. And it says it went into the models folder. Well, the models folder is somewhere where I believe, let me just double check. I don't think it would have gone in here. No, it goes into a models folder in the folder that you were in. So I made a mistake here. I should have, I should have actually showed you uh, in a different folder, but it dropped it right here. So I'm going to go to that folder. On Windows, you can just hit start period and hit enter. And then in here, there should be a new models folder. And under here, you'll see that there's this 3dball.nn. And in case you're curious what 3dball.nn is, if you go in here, these are actually TensorFlow files. And what it does right here, this last step after training, is it converts this TensorFlow model into an NN file, which is a Barracuda file. So this file up here can be dragged. I'm not going to do it because there's not really much point. But you can drag this NN file into here and it will be possible. Actually, why not? So I'm going to show you really quick. If, you, if I were to drag this in, there would be a conflict with this one. So I'm going to rename this to 01. And then I'm going to drag this down in here. And if I go to inside of this prefab and go to my agent, I can update this model and drag this in here and go back out. And when I press play, it's going to use the new model that we just trained. And you can see that it's working really well. So that's the gist of how training works. And while we really glossed over a lot of the details, now you have a pretty good idea of how the, you know, how things work in ML agents, going from an example to training and then having a neural network that can be applied to your agent for running what's called inference. And inference is just where it uses a pre-trained neural network. It's not doing any training. Hopefully this video has been helpful just to get you started with Unity ML agents. I know that I didn't go too deep into everything. And as you can see, there's kind of a lot to go into. It's, it's a very deep tool with a lot of different things that you can do with it. So to go into all of it in one video just isn't really possible. If you're interested in learning more, then of course I would encourage you to try out the AI flight course. Uh, that's been pretty popular and people have been really happy with it uh, that have taken it so far. So check out the link in the description for a discount code to that. Aside from that, if you're not able to or not willing to spend any money, that's no problem. We've got lots of other free content for Unity ML agents. Um, we've got stuff on our blog at immersivelimit.com, as well as other videos here on YouTube. 
And if you look on the Unity Learn platform, we also have some uh, projects on there. If you search for Unity ML Agents, you'll probably see Immersive Limit related stuff there. So thanks so much for watching. As always, let us know in the comments if you like the video or how we could improve or what else you'd like to see from us on this channel. Thank you.